Right, good morning, Mommy. Again, I'm going to give you your breakfast. I um, I want people to see, I want uh, Pete and Jeannie and Margie to see how, um, how your breakfast usually goes. So we usually have oatmeal for breakfast because I saw Jeannie gave oatmeal to Mom for breakfast sometimes, so now Mom gives it, you get it all the time, don't you? Except for one time I put prunes in it and it was yucky, so we didn't like that that day, so. Um, and uh, uh, she's turned a little bit differently in the bed now because it's important to keep her tailbone off the bed. So we put a little bit of a pillow underneath her there. So I usually have her either facing this way a little bit or that way a little bit or turn to face the wall or turn to face here with the way that the, um, that the nurse said to adjust the pillows. For example, I have to have her heels up off the bed so we need to put a pillow under her calves because her heels have soft spots on them that could develop into bed stores. Her skin is really fragile and her and I wrap up something and put it between her knees because her knees also are very fragile and her um, her tailbone is really fragile as well. The skin up by her tailbone and that's where there's a little bit of a soft spot that the nurse is coming twice a week to check out and make sure that we get that taken care of. So when we have our breakfast we read Little House in the Big Woods together every time just about. This is our favorite book. So we're going to go ahead we'll just open randomly to this page where I think we might have been before. And then I'm going to ask you to hold this for me, Mom. Can you hold that for me? Here we go. And I'm going to feed you your oatmeal while we read just for a couple minutes. What's that? What does that look like? <coughs> Well, it looks like it is like a... Is it a bird? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Is it a kitten? I don't think it's a kitten either. I don't think it's a kitten either. <laughs> is it a dog? <coughs> is it a dog? So. Is it a bear? <laughs> I don't know what it is if it isn't a bear. I'm going to raise your head up just a little bit more. So, yeah, I'm being careful so that you won't choke on your oatmeal. So let's have a bite of this oatmeal and then we'll get started. Is it good? Is it sweet enough? Winter days and winter nights. The first snow came and then the bitter cold. Every morning, Pa took his gun and his traps and was gone all day in the big woods, setting the small traps for muskrats and mink along the creeks, the middle-sized traps for foxes and wolves in the woods. He set out the big bear traps, hoping to get a fat bear before they all went into their dens for the winter. I think that's a fat bear. It's pretty fat, isn't it? Mm -hmm. One morning, he came back, took the horses and sled, and hurried away again. He had shot a bear. Laura and Mary jumped up and down and clapped their hands. They were so glad. Mary shouted, I want the drumstick! I want the drumstick! Mary did not know how big a bear drumstick is. <laughs> when Paul came back, he had both a bear and a pig in the wagon. He had been going through the woods with, with a big bear trap in his hands and the gun on his shoulder when he walked around a big pine tree covered with snow and the bear was behind the tree. The bear had just killed a pig and was picking it up to eat it. Pa said the bear was standing up on its hind legs, holding the pig in its paws just as though they were hands. Pa shot the bear, and there was no way of knowing where the pig came from, nor whose pig it was, so I just brought home the bacon, Pa said. There was plenty of meat for a la to last for a long time. What's that man holding? Is he holding a pencil? Is he holding a handkerchief? Is he holding a flashlight? I, so. I don't think so either. Is he holding a, a hammer? Is he holding a gun? I think he might be holding a gun. What's he shooting at? Oh, what's that? That 
looks to me like that's a big bear holding a pig. Does that look like that might be a bear holding a pig to you? No. Hope that, uh, hope we're talking loud enough to get, you're talking loud enough. I know I'm talking, I have a loud voice. Let me get another spoon here. The days and nights were so cold that the pork in a box and the bear meat hanging in a little shed outside the back door were solidly frozen and did not thaw. When Mom wanted fresh meat for dinner, Pa took the axe and cut off a chunk of frozen bear meat or pork. But the sausage balls or the salt pork or the smoked hams and venison Ma could get for herself from the shed or in the attic. The snow kept coming till it was drifted and banked against the house. In the morning, the window panes were covered with frost and beautiful pictures of trees and flowers and fairies. Ma said that Jack Frost came in the night and made the pictures while everyone was asleep. Laura thought that Jack Frost was a little man, all snowy white, wearing a glittering white pointed cap and soft white knee boots made of deerskin. His coat was white and his mittens were white, and he did not carry a gun on his back, but in his hands he had shining sharp tools with which he carved the pictures. Laura and Mary were allowed to take Ma's thimble and make pretty patterns of circles in the frost and the glass, but they never spoiled the pictures that Jack Frost had made in the night. When they put their mouths close to the pane and blew their breath on it, the white frost melted and ran in drops down the glass. Then they could see the drifts of snow outdoors and the great trees standing bare. Then they could see the drifts of snow outdoors and the great trees standing bare and black, making thin blue shadows on the white snow. Look at them, what are they doing? Are they washing dishes? <laughs> I'm not sure what they're doing. I don't think they're washing dishes though, are they? Are they brushing their hair? Are they making the bed? They might be making the bed. I think they are. I think they might be too. Laura and Mary helped Ma with the work. Every morning there were dishes to wash. Mary wiped more of them than Laura because she was bigger. But Laura always wiped carefully her own little cup and plate. By the time the dishes were all wiped and set away, the trundle bed was aired. Then, standing one on each side, Laura and Mary straightened the covers, tucked them in well at the foot and the sides, plumped up the pillows and put them in place. Then Ma pushed the trundle bed into its place under the big bed. After this was done, Ma began the work that belonged to each day. Each day had its own proper work. Ma used to say, wash on Monday, iron on Tuesday, mend on Wednesday, churn on Thursday, clean on Friday, bake on Saturday, rest on Sunday. Laura liked the churning and the baking days best of all the week. So. We're probably going to stop the video now, Mom. I think Pete and Jeannie and Margie will have a good view of what your breakfasts are like. We'll probably take maybe 10 or 15 minutes more to finish the oatmeal, and we'll probably read maybe, I don't know, a little bit more of the book. And um, then after that, um, I wait a few minutes, and, uh, and Mom will get out of bed. Uh, today, the physical therapist is going to come. The physic all these people coming in and helping us has been so amazing. I feel like I can figure out what I need to do now because before I was just on my own and I wasn't very good at figuring out what to do. Huh, Mom? I try my best, but I need direction. So, um, so uh, this is our breakfast. Uh, usually by uh, lunchtime, Mommy is uh, in, a, in a good mood to feed herself, but for breakfast, lots of times, she, it will just sit there if I don't, if I don't do, the, do the helping. Are they lovely? Mm -hmm. I think they're lovely too. I think they look just as lovely, almost as lovely as you. <laughs> I love you, Mom. I'm gonna just stop this video and then we'll eat and well, then we'll read and eat some more.